and uh, okay all right okay so good afternoon and welcome to our 10th embassy engage series a conversation on disability inclusion in the workplace at embassy reit we are privileged to be able to pull together passionate corporates from across our tech parks to engage in interactive conversations on meaning, meaningful social causes I hope you can all see the agenda for the next one hour on the screen. Uh, we have left time towards the end for you to share your experiences as well as to you know, keep some Q&A for some of the eminent speakers that we have here today. We're also joined today by HR and CSR heads of various companies and we thank you all for your participation. Uh, we would like to request you to you know, keep your cameras off while the speakers are presenting for an effective webinar experience. To kick us off today, we have Mike Holland, CEO of Embassy REIT, India's first listed REIT with a portfolio of 48 million square feet of office spaces across India. Mike is passionate about giving back to society and is a board member of numerous charitable organizations with a focus on education and disability. His support has really driven the Corporate Connect program here at Embassy REIT, which brings together like-minded companies from across our business parks to collectively address common challenges. It is my pleasure to invite Mike to now deliver the welcome address. Great, well, thank you, Janet. That's a very nice introduction. Um, numerous, by the way, actually is two. It's not uh, numerous. Um, and and I, yeah, I've been associated with a couple of um, organizations actually that happen to be based in Bangalore. Uh, one is focused around disability and one is focused primarily around education. Um, but the, and, and so I suppose in, in some senses, today's um, conversation, uh, and thank you all for joining, um, was catalyzed by um, one of our uh, tenants, Commonwealth Bank of Australia, a lady called uh, Pankajam Sri Devi, who, um, prodded me uh, maybe six, nine months ago uh, as they were about to move into one of our buildings at Manyatta Tech Park. And again, Sora uh, from Commonwealth Bank Australia is here. So thank you. Uh, Pankajam wasn't able to join today. Um, but Pankajam prompted me um, and said, you know, we would really like to do something more about uh, making sure that we employ uh, people who have different abilities, uh, um, disabled in the workforce, workplace. And, um, you know, I said to her, that that is just a fantastic initiative. We'd love to um, support and see what we can do together on that. And that was really the catalyst that, 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 that stimulated me to have the conversation with um, Shina and our CSR team, um, and hence today's conversation. And then layered on top of that, I think, is the really significant focus that we are um, feeling around the broad ESG space, um, that we've been hearing messages from some of our large-scale institutional investors uh, that they want to know more about what we're doing in the ESG space. Um, of course, many of our occupiers that you represent, um, we've always talked about ESG in the context primarily about energy, um, you know, the environmental piece, and primarily yeah, linking that to energy. But I think that you'll all be aware that we in Embassy have also had a very strong focus over a number of years, and, and thanks to um, chairman of Embassy Group, Jitu Virwani, a big focus on the community outside and particularly around education in, in the community. Uh, and so it's really Jitu's uh, work and vision that has created the team that we use at Embassy to support us on uh, what we used to call our CSR activities. Now, you know, we have a number of grand titles around it, but Shaina Ganapati and her team, Janet, um, Sarah, um, I think they're on the call today, who've done just an amazing job um, over the seven years that I've been part of Embassy 
in creating more and more opportunities where we can leverage our work from a CSR under, under the Companies Act uh, and, and, and the funding that goes around that, but leverage that by working with our corporate occupiers like yourselves uh, in the community, in and around our business parks. And, um, you know, we've, we've had a, just in the last, in this last six months, I think a couple of instances jump out in my memory. Um, we, we opened a school just a little bit north of Manyatta, um, which had been built in partnership with ANZ Bank uh, through their CSR funding. I think the funding was approximately um, 40% with us and, and approximately 60% with ANZ. Um, a great example how in the community around the business parks, we're, we're, we're trying to make sure that we make a difference in partnership with our occupiers. And then more recently, the example um, in this COVID period where uh, we, together with um, many corporate occupiers, we've ensured the creation of, I think, 59 ICU beds in three different hospitals in Bangalore. And again, that's, that's with companies like Swiss Re, McAfee, um, actually with another uh, property owner, Capital Land or Ascendus were, were part of that. So Shina and the team are doing a great job in engaging um, with the corporates, leveraging our strengths together to get, get better results for the benefit of our communities. And um, we call that program uh, the Corporate Connect program. And I believe that we've now completed approximately, uh, well, over 50 projects with 23 different corporates. That number seems to increase month by month, but it's a very significant number. And I'm hopeful that through the dialogue that we have today, that we're able to um, initiate um, another string, I suppose, to the type of work that we're looking to facilitate in our communities. And that's through uh, creation of employment opportunities in our business um, and also in the businesses within our parks. Um, thanks to Pankajam and Commonwealth Bank of Australia, we, we ended up reaching out to an NGO called Enable India, um, who will speak today. We've signed a, an MOU, a consulting contract with them um, uh, whereby they will help us and advise us both internally on you know, perhaps what we need to, to learn and do better uh, and also um, to identify potential roles um, and job descriptions within our existing framework um, and also help us to fill those positions. So we wanted to introduce um, that that team um, uh, to you. So I won't I won't speak any any further. But I am really grateful. I see there's 26 people on the call. Um, I'm really grateful to all of you for joining, and um, I I hope that we can have a, a good dialogue over the next 50 minutes. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Uh, I'd like to now request Enable India to kindly provide us a, a, a site into their roadmap and framework uh, for inclusion uh, in, in workplaces for disabled employees. Thank you. Thank you, Shaina. So um, should I start? Please go ahead. Yeah, sure. OK, so that's me up there. I am a program manager with Enable India and uh, have multifaceted uh, sort of responsibilities in the organization. I manage Enable India Solutions, which is the enterprise arm of Enable India, working with companies. I also have responsibilities within Enable India, which is the charitable trust. So uh, Shaina, would you like me to uh, share the screen or would you be sharing the presentation we've shared with you earlier? Uh, you can go ahead. All right, just give me a minute then. I thought you would be sharing it. Okay, no worries, I will just give me a minute.
So I will just share my screen and quickly take you through a little bit about uh, Enable India. And um, I know many of you may have worked with us in the past or are currently working with us. Uh, so bear with me if it's a bit of a repetition. Uh, so Enable India is a NGO. It's a, a public charitable trust that was set up in 1999 by Shanti Raghavan and her husband Dipesh Sutarya. The journey started on a very personal note with Shanti when her brother Hari Raghavan started losing his vision at the age of 14. And uh, Dipesh and Shanti, as can be expected, the entire family actually was very devastated, young boy, very bright, a great future ahead of him, but now has started losing his vision. And this was an irreversible condition which just got progressively worse. So uh, what Dipesh and Shanti did is they took a decision, actually the entire family did, they took a decision to convert an emotion into action. So instead of, uh, you know, beating their uh, heads, uh, they decided to sort of uh, do something about it. They figured out how Hari could learn to use a computer, even though he was blind. What are the solutions that are available? What are the softwares that are available so that Hari can, you know, complete his studies? Uh, having got got all this information, uh, they wanted to also obviously help other people. And that was really, uh, you know, when the idea of Enable India sprouted. Uh, and then Hari, after finishing his education on the top of his institution in Mumbai, went through 70 interviews and did not get a job. And the reason he did not get a job was only because of his disability. That is when Deepesh and Shanti realized that it is not enough to just work with the person with disability. Of course, that is, uh, you know, sort of uh, something which needs to happen. But the other part that is working with the company or the employer or whatever is going to be the environment that that person needs to inhabit also needs work because this person with disability has gone through a journey. Uh, people around him have has gone through a journey. Uh, he, so he knows what he is capable of today in spite of his disability. But a, an employer or a company will obviously, they, they don't need to know that. So they would not have been aware of that. They would not be sensitized to that unless there is a few people have a case of, you know, a personal incidence of disability, right? Otherwise, why should a company no, need to know this? And that is when uh, Enable India started working with companies as well. And uh, to make companies ready to be able to hire persons with disability and keep them there and give them gainful employment. Yeah, sorry. Uh, it's been 21 years since then. Over time, we have worked with 14 disabilities impacting almost two and a half lakh, 250,000 lives. These are lives of persons with disabilities along with their families, uh, which is a very, and, and you know, uh, principals, uh, caregivers and stakeholders. This is very important because a person with disability is very dependent, especially in the initial years. Uh, on uh, you know people around them having enough information on knowing what to do next. If Hari did not have a Shanti and a Dipesh in his life, he would probably not be where he is today, right? He's a very successful person in the corporate space, uh, handling a global portfolio out of Mumbai, with, working with an MNC company. So you need the family to be you know sort of empowered and. Uh, sensitized and made aware knowledge is key so that is why it's very important for us to be working with families and with you know the, the main the key stakeholders in the person's lives the other thing that is uh, very important and significant is that we were able to open up 291 plus job roles any of you who have worked with enable india in the past uh, have definitely heard of a job analysis i mean that is something like it's like a mantra. We would not place a person without doing a job analysis on the role. Now, having done job analysis for the last 20 odd years, we have been able to open up 291 job roles, which were earlier not done by persons with disability. And this is huge because before this, there was a, this persons with disability were hired in, uh, you know, government or PSU jobs under a job quota. And they were very often not productive in their jobs. So they would just come, uh, log in, log out, take a salary, or they would get to do a job which is very stereotypical, like a telephone operator, maybe. There's nothing, there's nothing wrong with being a telephone operator, but there is something wrong with 
you being uh, made to believe that you can't do anything else or you don't have a you know a projected sort of growth in the organization that can be planned for you the other thing that is important and significant is the disabilities ngos alliance uh, we realized uh, very early on that you know any person with disability is has different needs at different stages of their life cycle just like you have or i have or any of us sitting in this call has and uh, obviously one organization like enable india focuses on livelihoods there are other organizations which focus on early intervention or there may be other organizations that focus on rehabilitation or education now every every ngo is able to work on what is their expertise and focus on a certain part of the journey of a person with disability right uh, it's like for us school was different and our workplace is different they're two different uh, worlds which exist for us and that's part of our journey as a person similarly people with disabilities also have different needs at different life uh, you know life stages and the disabilities ngos alliance was an an effort to bring together the different skills that ngos have to be able to support a person with disability in their uh, journey this is the governing board of enable india just a quick glimpse we have shanti and dipesh uh, leading us even today from the front uh, shanti works more on sectoral impact dipesh is our ceo and completely hands on works with us every single day uh, and some of our other governing board members we meet once a quarter the governing board meets once a quarter and uh, we have meetings and the board is fairly uh, involved with what we are doing at enable india this is our advisory board the advisory board everybody is there because of a skill they bring to the table and just a quick uh, glimpse of the advisory board this is something we are particularly proud of we have almost 50% of our workforce uh 50% of our workforce are persons with disability we not we, we may not be a very large workforce we have about 110 people today and around i would say about 50 of them 55 of them would be persons with disability so walking the talk clearly these are some awards we wa have won over time and some accreditations that we have received why are we why do we even need to consider disability i mean we have enough people in our country but the point is to be a truly inclusive workspace and i'm going to quote something that pankajam ma'am is often known to say uh, so pankajam shri devi i think who actually started off this uh, initiative that all of us are together today in the sense of working with the embassy group pankajam ma'am always says that the workplace inside the workplace has to be representative of outside the workplace right and inside the workplace we don't have a disability representation however outside the workplace we say that uh, as per the census of india we have about 230000 people with disabilities in india right so it's a huge number and 50% of the, the the people who are disabled within the employment age do not work so you can see how underrepresented it underrepresented it is and there was another study which said that even 4% you know when they reached out to you know leading companies in different sectors 4% of these companies only were able to declare uh, people uh, with disabilities in managerial positions right so it's it's very underrepresented and not a true represented representation of what is out there when we talk about including people with disabilities uh, in companies very uh, you know very uh, what should i say very normally we think of wage employment right but there are many other things on the way to wage employment that we can also participate in we can provide exposure to persons with disabilities we can do volunteering we can buy products we can uh, sort of support self employment uh, initiatives and so on we have worked out a framework of working with employers uh, we call this inclusa it's a very happy pizza as you can see on the screen and uh, basically what we are telling uh, what we say about inclusa is that there are eight buckets of for towards disability uh, inclusion uh, very broadly speaking eight slices that if you do something from each slice you will be on your way to dis to you know mainstreaming person with disability in your organization and the beauty about the inclusa is that 
it can be customized to your needs it can be sort of uh, it can respond to what you as an organization have an appetite for right right now and also what you have a taste for right now just like a regular pizza so with that i will uh, i'm done with my presentation and yeah happy to move on to the next part of the thank you so much nentara that was quite ins insightful and 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 i think the need to do this and the need to think about it really is something that i truly believe that each one of us um, in this conversation today uh, you know is going to be doing after this uh, call um, i'd like to call upon uh, you know as you know there are uh, from all our corporate partners attending today commonwealth bank of australia is is the reason why we are here today i'd like to call upon saurabh who heads their financial crimes uh, division uh, to speak to us uh, saurabh i know that the bank has placed a lot of emphasis on two aspects uh, when it comes to inclusion uh, at the workplace for disability one is of course adapting physical infrastructure and the other is sensitizing uh, you know um, uh, the workplace and the employees uh, we'd love to know what and how uh, this has been laid out at your company sure shaina am i audible yes okay so uh, cba is a uh, values driven organization and values are at the core of whatever we do one of our core values is care care for our employees care for the community in which we operate and care for pretty much everybody that we interact on a day to day basis and therefore we have a lot of empathy not only for our own employees but also for potential employees who can uh, be a part of the cba family in the future or for the members of the community in which of they and uh, that is also reflected in all the good things that we have been uh, hearing about pankaj am because she maintains that tone from the top and that is something that has flown across the organization and therefore when we decided to work towards employing people the one thing that we were very cautious about is that we have to ready ourselves as an organization not only to bring them on board but also to amalgamate them into the wider cba family so that we can give them an opportunity to prove themselves in whatever opportunities we were given so a couple of things that we worked on one was how do we ready ourselves as uh, you know individuals who will be interacting with them and that effort towards reading ourselves started very early on even before we started interviewing these people so we conducted a sensitization workshop with all the hiring managers who were supposed to uh, you know review their resumes for this second interview with the and <laughs> those workshops were very insightful because they gave us information around some of the very simple things that might have been overlooked but could mean a lot to somebody with disability like what is the terminology to be used when referring to a particular uh, disability what are the do's and don'ts what questions is it okay to ask and what, what questions should be reserved should be reserved and also given that we are working in a remote pattern right now how best to give them an opportunity to succeed at the interview so for example if we are interviewing somebody who lip read is video conferencing the right me medium to in to interview them will they be able to effectively interact with the interviewer and be able to answer all the questions to the best of their ability some such uh, nuances were discussed and i believe they these sensitization workshop went a long way in Uh, giving a good understanding to all the hiring managers around what to uh, you know where to exercise caution when we were uh, interacting with people with disability another thing that they clearly highlighted was that we should not be interviewing them for rejection but we should be interviewing them for selection so look out for reasons why somebody will be able to add value to your organization check if the person is trainable check if you can bring them up the curve even if they are not quite there as of today so that again was a, a good thing to learn from enable india and i think that also went a long way in us being able to roll out offers to people with disability and then of uh, obviously as you mentioned being 
able to provide them an ecosystem in which they can function to the best of their abilities that was also important so is the infrastructure that we have in place suitable for them um, and there's some of the things that we looked at even though they were quite simple but could have made a significant negative impact on them for example uh, somebody on crutches will they be able to open the doors somebody on a wheelchair will they be able to swipe their card on the swipe uh, reader or uh, the transport that we have in place the fleet that we have will it be usable by people with disability or wheelchair users so all these things were taken into consideration i think one thing that helped us was that we were in the process of setting up our operation so we could take care of these things from the very beginning but uh, i think uh, it it was good that we decided to look at these things very uh, cautiously before we started onboarding people with disabilities because i believe now we are in a position where we'll be able to give them the right opportunity thank you uh, thank you so much uh, for your insights i think some of us after the call will connect with your your colleagues who have actually helped set up this framework to see yeah. what is what are the on ground challenges that you know might be uh, you know considered while while laying this out thank you sure. so much and uh, thanks for what you've done for us today uh, yeah in bringing us together uh, i'd 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 i now would like to invite sajana shankaran who heads hr at mitel sajana welcome um uh, i understand that during this lockdown uh, as a company you've had the opportunity to rethink about you know hiring uh, specially abled uh, employees and and also you know looking at creating an entire framework uh, you know being at at home may be a much easier sort of transition for them before they actually get into the workplace tell us a bit more about this uh thank you sana for this opportunity and i have to mention naintara you know uh, what i am really really kind of you know uh, thrilled by what enable india do and i cannot agree more the workforce that we have in office should be a representation of the people outside right and i think uh, us corporates a lot of us can do a lot of changes to how we are setting up the workforces so uh, thanks for you know kind of briefing what we have done and uh, saurav we would definitely reach out to you i think you're far ahead in the curve uh, doing a fantastic brilliant job so a lot to learn from you guys as well right uh, so coming to vital uh, a, a small brief about what we do in india we are just about 5 years 4 and a half years in india right now we are pretty small in size so the first couple of years when we started you know our our major focus was to set up a center in india right now with pandemic coming up in 2020 we as a team paused a second and we thought you know is there a way that we can change uh, the way or you know how we program our workforce right when i say program our workforce the talent force which is coming to the organization so we looked at different parameters and one of the parameter that we looked at was you know how do we engage differently abled workforce right and we understood that we are doing really bad out there we don't have anybody who is in our office who is differently abled or who is kind of physically disabled challenged and you know we did not had created a space for them right the first opportunity that we saw that you know there is no there are roles which does not need a physical access to office right and uh, when we need to employ somebody with a physical disability the biggest challenge that comes and i'm sure you know uh, nainthara would agree to this is this you know is there we do have a proper infrastructure right as saurav mentioned you know how do we interview them in the same way how do we engage them in our infrastructure right now when we looked at infrastructure there were two parts of infrastructure one uh, since we work out of manita okay do we have our tech park arranged or you know uh, accommodative or you know arrangements made in a way that you know the differently able or the physically challenged folks can come into the office the second infrastructure that we looked at is that you know the commutation part right you know how do they reach out to the tech park how do they reach out to our office to kind of deliver that they want to deliver right so we felt that is one issue which we may not be able to answer immediately because that's a holistic change in the society that is required that's when we paused and looked at it oh now we are working from home why don't we have roles which are working from home and the engineers we kind of look at those roles where we don't need a permanent access to office maybe once in a month once in a 15 days can we just move that role entirely to this folks where we are 
we hire this differently able people. So we have identified those roles, putting that roles into a framework. And you know, as Saurav said, we are into that education phase where we are training our hiring managers and you know, kind of starting to engage with different NGOs and firms, which is kind of helping us to get into, you know, reach out to this talent also, right? As a beginner, we don't know where we can reach out to this talent pool as well. So uh, that is the phase we are in, okay? So we try to encash something from this pandemic and you know, the, the and their change in the thought process in the workforce and we're trying to get uh, make it a better place to work uh, even for some fo folks from their home itself make a workplace if they cannot come to office let's take office to them and give them an opportunity oh, that's really fantastic and i think nentara will have a lot of answers to the question that you have in your mind uh, thank you so much and i think you've shown us that you know being stuck at home it's not a bad thing. There are so many opportunities that we can open up. Uh, uh, and, and I can speak for my team in the last two to three months, uh, we've been stuck at home, but the quantum of work that we have managed to push out, just being at home with all the challenges of, you know, not being in the office, uh, you know, reinventing ourselves is, is probably, uh, you know, the best thing to do. So thank you so much for your time. Uh, I'm going to now invite uh, any other corporate guests that we have here today to kindly speak up if you would like to share um, you know something fantastic that your organization is doing uh, for the specially abled uh, colleagues at your workplace or if you have questions for Nentara. Uh, Sana, probably I would have a question to Nainthara, right? Because we are in that action spot kind of thing, right? Uh, so Nainthara, if we want to reach out to this talent, right? I mean, you know, when you say about this talent pool, right? Uh, so can you just help us understand that, you know, what is the kind of skill set we kind of get from them, right? I mean, is it, uh, is it something which is... Uh, uh, maybe something to do with their education background also and you know how do we tap into them right uh, how do we kind of ensure that we are reaching at the right place and we get an opportunity to hire them and you know how do we kind of engage them and most of the corporates right uh, sometimes find it difficult to have a one-on-one -on -one engagement right I mean uh, even when we are hiring we depend on our job portals and you know kind of a source where we can go as a holistic and get kind of put them from there. So can you just throw us some light to know how do we kind of approach, what is the accessibility to this talent pool? Yeah, sure, sure. So definitely I can do that. So there are a few things that, you know, when we look at uh, persons with disability, the first thing that we have to be cognizant of is that, you know, education itself is extremely inaccessible in our country. So what that means basically is that people with uh, disabilities tend to get left out of mainstream education. So people with uh, hearing impairment or uh, vision impairment are actually, uh, you know, sort of encouraged to drop math and science at an early age, even, you know, by grade eight, grade nine, they drop it. So these people would never then become technical, uh, you know, sort of uh, technical contributors to the workforce, right? Uh, similarly, the, the other part that we need to remember is very often it is a double whammy. It is not only your disability, it is also your socioeconomic uh, condition of your family. So people with uh, disabilities who have families who are able to afford better, they normally, and especially people with the milder disabilities or the physical disabilities, that is uh, physical disabilities as in the locomotor disabilities, they would typically be able to get their solutions uh, by paying for it in the sense, if a person is not able to access a particular college because it is inaccessible, the parents can probably arrange for a tutor for the person to be a tutored at home on those subjects or send the person abroad in the West in the more developed countries, accessibility itself is better. So uh, it is not only a problem of disability, it is also a problem of the socio-economic strata. But in saying that, an organization like Enable India, for example, on an annual basis, we have about 2,500 2, to 3,000 persons with disability who register on our system as job seekers. They, this 
this range of the, this 3000 people range from right from people who would be holding blue collar jobs so like you know uh, in your housekeeping or your horticulture or your pantry those kind of jobs or in some of our logistics uh, partners we have people who are packers and uh, you know sorters in their warehouses and things like that right up to very uh, you know niche uh, skilled jobs as well i think and also what where we have been successful is uh, sort of looking at jobs which are green jobs uh, looking at jobs which are uh, we span across sectors so if you're looking uh, a person with disability may not have a technical skill but however even a technical company would have hr roles or you know accounts payable role or admin roles and so on which people can do so uh, that is one of the things that we look at also we work with uh, colleges uh, where which are meant so as i said education is largely inaccessible so a lot of times uh, persons with disabilities end up going to colleges which are only for person you know for people with disabilities and so for example we work with the jss pda which is a college in uh, in mysore that works with the deaf and uh, physically uh, disabled we work with uh, kalasilingam which works with de uh, with the deaf we work with uh, um, sorry ambedkar which works with physically disabled in the north so that is also part of our talent pool so uh, the best uh, suggestion would be to do a job analysis within the organization to see what are the jobs that can be done by people and what are the disabilities that it can be you know done by that will allow the organization that you're working with whichever organization you're working with to source candidates to be able to find you a combination of skills and the particular disability that is able to do the job with minimum sort of solutions and uh, also another thing i would want to stress on over here a lot of times we don't find an exact match however the person has learnability <coughs> sorry so <clears throat> one of the things that we do suggest is can you hire someone as an intern they may not know everything but they can at least come on board and learn agree nanta i think that was brilliant and i like i like your thought process you know hiring somebody as intern and giving them an opportunity to scale up but thank you thank you for getting this knowledge to us yeah thank you so much hey. Yes. Let's now invite um, Anand uh, from TCFM, uh, which is our company which handles all the facility management, to share a couple of thoughts about how uh, you know, specially able colleagues have managed to be you know managed to integrate into our organization. Hey, sorry, just one question I had. Okay, sure. Please go ahead. Yeah, Carlton here from Nvidia. Uh, I just want to. Please go ahead. Hey. Yeah, just sorry. Uh, just one last question. Uh, I know from a company perspective, we may be kind of taking into account uh, when we are hiring people. Uh, however, most of our companies hire a lot of contractors, vendors. I mean, we we interact with a lot of consultants for our workforce, right? Are these vendor? I mean, are these consultants or these contract places taking into consideration them? Because there could be a bulk of people. who would be going to consultants right so maybe that's just a point to kind of take into account here that's all absolutely carlton and thanks for bringing it up in fact what we do is that uh, you know even when we work with large corporates we do um, continually suggest to them that they should also be telling their vendors and suppliers and contract uh, or you know any organization that's supplying them with contract labor to also um, include people with disabilities in their workforce and if if you as an organization say that you know you hire and we we want because you hire for us then that will also make a huge impact okay thanks thank you carlton that was very important i think for us to understand um may i now invite anand from tc share a couple of thoughts yeah hi thanks shaina hi all and we have been uh, an embassy is manpower home and we have been deploying across uh, pan india for uh, uh, our embassy group and the open markets uh, different uh, peoples 
So we have been uh, working with uh, some of the disability institutions uh, past year, and we have deployed some around 15 people uh, last year in some of our open market locations uh, for ESPL. And uh, even with Bank of Australia for WeWork, we have deployed three staffs in Manyata. And we have started dialogue on working with Enable India. And we have been identified some of uh, positions where we can uh, locate uh, this uh, colleagues across our team and which was uh, under the discussions we have two calls with enable india so we are hoping that to happen very shortly in manyata we will be deploying some of our staffs uh, with uh, enable india so man uh, i would like to ask you about the specific training or any specific uh, you have a material for this uh, physically able peoples where uh, you have done a separate uh, course for them in deploying across uh, portfolios Sure. So Anand, to answer that, Enable India's expertise is in livelihoods. So we do conduct livelihood trainings, right? We don't conduct any domain specific training because we work across, as you know, as I mentioned, across about 700 plus companies across around 31 sectors. So it uh, we don't have the domain expertise, but what we do work is on employability of uh, a candidate with disability. This is very uh, important for people with disabilities because uh, most, uh, you know, children, when like, you know, all of us learn to be responsible and accountable from the time we are a child, right? We have get ready for school, brush your teeth, when you're very small, have you done your homework? How were your exams? And so on, come home on time. And then, and this continues, right? You get a job, you study, you become a part of a family and uh, your family, your you know, your own uh, nuclear family and so on. So we are like sort of accountability is that sort of becomes a part of our DNA. However, with people with disabilities, typically the treatment is on two ends of the spectrum. One end, one end of the spectrum is that, you know, you just, uh, you, you, you just be there. I will take care of you. As a parent, I will take care of you. You don't need to do anything. So you don't even need to get up and get yourself a glass of water. That is one end of the spectrum. The other end of the spectrum is that I can't even look at you. So you're never going to amount to anything. So you don't need to do anything. And unfortunately, that is the case in most, most of the families, right? Yeah. There are a few more enlightened families who tread a more middle path. So these people uh, who have not had any kind of accountability placed on them, it is extremely important for them to understand what, what makes you employable. It's not only your skills, or, uh, you know, that, that makes you important. It's a combination of skills and attitude, right? Knowledge, skills, and attitude. And that is something that we teach uh, at Enable India. However, we work with companies uh, towards what I was talking about earlier also, the internship model. And we also have a collaborative training model, wherein we bring in the employability skills and we work on the softer aspects, uh, working with people with disabilities. And we're happy to partner with organizations where they bring in the domain skills. I hope that answers your question somewhat. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Anand. Um, thank you, Nantara. I think Anand, just to tell, let you know, Nantara, Anand has been our partner with our outreach programs where we bring in students who have passed out of government schools. Uh, we train them and then we sort of align them to jobs within embassy as well. Um, so he's our partner and we've been doing some great work together. Uh, awesome. Yeah, I'd like to. I'd like to also just check if anyone else has a question before we wrap up. Uh, and of course, um, you know, uh, we can always get back to Nantara at a later time. One question that I have for Nantara is: What are some of the corporate policies and practices that you think should change in order to more effectively engage uh, people with disabilities? Sort of, uh, this is a question uh, which will definitely not make me popular. <laughs> so there are a host of, uh, you know, policies and practices that really need to change. Um, so, you know, I have, there's, there's I, unfortunately, I don't have the graphic with me right here, but uh, I'm sure many of you have seen, you know, the graphic of three kids trying to watch a baseball match, right? And there's a wall. And then you have one child who's tall, who's able to see, there's another child who's uh, not able to see, another child that's even shorter. And then each of the children are given three boxes. Uh, I mean, one box each. Where So they're given an equal solution and they all stand up on the box. But the guy who's uh, 
tall already that box is not really of any help because he could anyway see the match the guy who's standing in the middle is now able to see the match but the littlest fellow is still not able to see the match despite to standing on the box and then the next graphic is the tall guy is not given any a box to stand on because he can see and the middle guy is given one box because he can see with the one box and the two boxes are given to the smallest fellow now he can also see right so and why i am saying this in so much of detail is the first example where all three were given a box of the same size is what we could call equality right the second example is actually what we say what we say is equity so right now what we are trying to arrive at with companies is uh, reaching some form of equity so um, the third graphic actually in that same picture is where there is no wall and yeah. that is where we want to reach where the about the you know the barriers itself are removed but till such time i think the first thing that i would like to tell uh, organizations is you know there's no best place to start just start somewhere right the second uh, thing i would like to say which i think sort of you've already mentioned thank you is the whole uh, you know looking at a even looking at a resume or when you're going out to hire people with disabilities do it with an intention to hire them you know unfortunately in india we have a problem of plenty right our population is so big so right from preschool it is a it is a method of rejection right a preschool has 50 seats there'd be 50000 people who will apply from there you will uh, sort of whittle it down that happens everywhere even in with matrimony uh, websites that happens right i mean everywhere but here what what one would sort of suggest is that when you're looking at a person with a disability look at it with an intention to hire because for the same post if you were to uh, you know ask for applications from people without disabilities and people with disabilities people without disability will probably get that many resumes people with disability will probably get one or two right that is the pool that is the pool that exists so if you want to make a difference you need to change your lens of hiring and the third thing that i would say is that really works is that uh, you know uh, when we are looking at a uh, you know at at making a difference and hiring people with disability actually wanting to make a difference approach the hiring looking at the supply side all of us i mean we have jobs which are available in our organization we go out with those uh, job uh, requirements and we hire which is fine there's nothing wrong with that that is how business is done but when you're looking at integrating and mainstreaming persons with disability look at the supply side and see how you can retrofit them into your organization it it could be it could happen through a training a collaborative training internship it could happen through different ways Yeah. but that is a way to then be able to make a difference and then skill them within because sure. they've not had those they've not had the same starting point as their non disabled counterpart so you have to create that level playing field right now let's look at creating equity and uh, so i know with pankaj and ma'am at the helm i'm pretty sure that very soon we'll be talking about not having that barrier at all absolutely yeah, yeah. thank you nanda thanks sort of great question again um i think for us at embassy it's it's really humbling to even give this conversation a start right so i want to thank uh, every one of you who've taken this one hour off today to uh, you know begin this conversation for us at least uh, and, and i hope that each one of you take this message back uh, not only just back to your companies but every corporate that you're associated with and uh, let's let's seriously look at creating a meaningful environment um, which is inclusive for our specially abled uh, colleagues um, going forward um, um i think all of us at embassy also want to say this uh, we are really committed to this story and we hope that across our divisions uh, we will make uh, whatever is necessary both physical environment uh whether it's you know making sure that our colleagues are sensitized and also you know policy change i mean that's such a critical part of everything that 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 will tie this together you know try and see what best we can do in that space uh so thank you once again uh we are going to make sure that a recording of this session is available to you uh, coordinates of nantara and uh, you know all the questions and answers that were asked today are also sort of summarized for you so on behalf of everybody at embassy reet and uh, at the 
different divisions of embassy who's present here. Thank you so much for your time. Uh, and we wish you all the best. Do stay safe. And, uh, uh, let's all pledge to start this conversation and take this to a meaningful end. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Shaina. Thank you so much for giving us an opportunity to be here and uh, speak to this uh, extremely august audience because it's not often that um, you know we can have this kind of a collective of uh, people who are actually decision makers and change makers in a sense you know all on the same platform so thank you so much embassy for giving us this opportunity and really look forward to more such occasions let's, and let's yeah again Nintara. i'm sure some of us will go back absolutely yes mm -hmm. thank you so much things out with you thank absolutely you. thank you and everybody stay safe please